As you guys know, I'm a big fan of old retro consoles and computers, and for me, it doesn't get much better than the original PlayStation 1. Released in Japan in late 1994 and the rest of the world almost a year later, the Sony PlayStation became a dominant brand in the video game world. These days, there's many ways to enjoy PS1 titles. The Sony PlayStation 2 and PS3 offer backward compatibility. You can emulate a PS1 very well thanks to modern emulation, which doesn't really demand a fast PC. For example, a Raspberry Pi can easily get away with emulating a PS1 without too much trouble. Then there's the PlayStation Classic, a standalone device that was a disappointment, but modded can yield a pretty good experience. But for me, the best way to experience PS1 is on original hardware, as it was intended. This however, comes at a cost. You see, the Sony PlayStation 1 came during the time of CRTs, which by the way, I absolutely love, but getting a nice clean image on a modern display can be tricky. There are however a few options. The first is to just connect your composite cable that came with the PS1 to your modern display, if it supports it. Not a very good idea, it looks pretty average. Next, you could use a RetroTINK 2X with the same composite cable. This offers a better image quality. There's also the HD RetroVision cables that output to component signals, which looks pretty good. Hyperkin and Pound offer inexpensive HDMI solutions, but buyer beware, the image quality is suboptimal as are the cables themselves. And my usual method is to use an RGB SCART cable from Instruction Industries and feed that into my open source scan converter. This is a very clean image overall, but it does have its issues around interlacing and resolution switching. But for me, what has always been the number one preferred option is the ability to achieve pixel perfect accuracy by directly tapping into the motherboard. We've seen this before on the Nintendo 64 with the very sought after and expensive Ultra HDMI. And recently with the Sega Dreamcast and the DC HDMI modification by Citrus 3000. But now, thanks to Citrus 3000, an HDMI modification is available for the PlayStation 1, which is known as the PS1 Digital. The PS1 Digital is a hardware modification to the Sony PlayStation that adds HDMI by directly tapping the digital video and audio signals on the motherboard. This is completely native video and audio. It outputs 480p, 960p and 1080p, all inch to scaled for that pixel perfect look. The PS1 Digital is a hardware mod that installs inside the Sony PlayStation and be warned, installing this device is not for the beginner level person. This requires experience with soldering. We're going to take a closer look at the hardware on the channel and I want to say a big thank you to Citrus 3000 for sending out a preview unit. The first thing that I noticed was how crystal clear the PlayStation 1 boot up screen looked like. This is not something I'd ever seen before. As a comparison, this is how it looks on the open source scan converter, which is excellent in its own right, but this is a level above. Now I should mention that all the games that you'll see captured in this video were directly taken from the PS1 digital HDMI output going into my capture device with no additional post processing. Now the first thing that I noticed and hopefully you will as well is just how much this image pops. Now my existing setup with the RGB SCART cable going into my open source CAN converter does yield a good looking image, no question, but this is the best in class. And I'm absolutely amazed at how well this looks. The PS1 Digital, as mentioned, supports resolutions up to 1080p, and that's what I'm currently running this demonstration in at the moment. But the hardware supports VGA, 480p, and 960p as well. Now you're probably wondering, what is the point of those resolutions when you can just connect up to 1080p? Well, it means that you can connect this up to a 4x3 aspect ratio display, for example, an old school VGA monitor, and have amazing clarity and image quality. It's really that good. Now I haven't tested that myself, but for those enthusiasts that want to connect up the PlayStation 1 to a VGA display, then this would be an absolute ideal choice. Now, as you can see, I've tested a range of different game genres, and some of them may not be a part of the usual suspects of high profile PlayStation 1 releases, but I did want to demonstrate how well the PS1 Digital works. You'll notice the dithering in many games. 
This is obviously a limitation of the PlayStation 1 hardware. Now, if you run a PlayStation on a CRT, you may not have ever seen this effect before, but on a clear image, it's quite noticeable. Now, there is a smoothing filter that you can apply, the HQ2X, which will help smooth out these pixels, but I'm personally not a big fan of any type of smoothing filter, but this may be a personal choice. I do feel like it smooths out the image too much, but of course, it's all up to your personal preference. The other cool thing is the scan line support, which does look pretty good and it's quite configurable. But once again, I'm not a big fan of scan lines, but this has to be one of the better implementations I've seen. You can control the intensity of the lines and what I do like about this implementation, it does not lower the contrast and brightness of the main image itself, which many of the cheaper scan line effects actually do. Now, there are a few things that I do want to mention with this modification. The first is the price. It's $160 and it's not cheap. Make no mistake, guys, this is an enthusiast level modification. If you absolutely want the best video and audio quality from your PlayStation 1, then this is the best you're ever going to get. So that of itself makes this modification very, very desirable. And I think the price is quite reasonable. But if you're looking for just something to capture or to play your PlayStation 1 hardware on a modern television. There are cheaper solutions, but be, be warned that those solutions aren't anywhere near the quality that you'll get with the PS1 Digital HDMI. While I'm very impressed with the hardware, it's not perfect. I did come across an issue with Street Fighter Alpha 3, where the main image was offset incorrectly. I thought maybe this was my display, so I tried again with a different HDMI cable going through my capture device, and the same thing had occurred. I tested about 30 titles in total, and this was the only game that had this issue. But the good news is, the hardware comes with built-in Wi-Fi, so any issues like this, in theory, can be fixed and pushed over the device as a firmware update, which is a really cool touch. Another limitation of the PS1 Digital is that it can only be installed in certain motherboard types, the PU18 and the PIU20 motherboards. Now these can be found in the SCPH550X and the SCPH700X line of PlayStations. Now fortunately there's probably millions of those that are out there, but just be aware that if you're running a PlayStation 1, then you may want to check your motherboard revision before you decide that you want to pull the plug and purchase a PS1 Digital for yourself. Now, the second thing I want to mention is the installation itself. It's not easy to do if you're a beginner. If you have some experience at soldering, you could probably do this modification yourself. But I will say that it's quite complicated and requires experience with micro soldering. So if you don't have those types of skills, then I would suggest you look to someone else to do this for you. Now, the good news is there are modders out there that will do the installation for you if you are not feeling comfortable doing it yourself. For a price, of course, someone else will do this modification. And on Citrus 3000's website, he has a list of modders that he recommends to do the work for you. So that's a very good solution. But just be warned, you know, it's not a simple modification to do yourself. There is a little bit of complexity that's involved. We also have to discuss the audio, which once again is directly tapped from the motherboard as well, and it's entirely digital as you would expect. It's excellent, and really, just take a listen for yourself. Behind D, Colonel. What's a Russian gunship doing here? I have no idea. Some PS1 games run at 480i interlace mode that will show noticeable flickering that you've probably seen before. The good news is there are some options provided to address these in the menu. My preferred option is to force everything to 240p. This will remove the flicker, but it does introduce combing artifacts, but then you can apply a deinterlacing algorithm, either bob or weave, to address these. 
The other great thing about this PS1 Digital is that it keeps your existing AV port intact, so you can still either use your existing cables or the PS1 Digital HDMI, which is a nice touch. I am a big fan of AV mods that don't remove any existing AV functionality and the PS1 Digital just adds another option to the existing system and it's something that I really appreciate. As of the making of this video, the first round of PS1 Digital should go on sale sometime in the middle of September 2020 and will be available on Citrus 3000's website. Like I said, it is expensive and having someone to install it for you would make it even more pricier, but if you want the absolute best-in-class image and audio quality out of the PS1, then look no further. It's that good. Now, I definitely want to see more of these style modifications being done to older systems, and the good news is there are two original Xbox HDMI modifications that are coming out that do very similar things to what you saw in this episode. So, I will be checking out both of the OG Xbox HDMI internal modifications as well. So stay tuned on the channel if you want to learn more about that. That will be coming up over the next couple of weeks. Well guys, we are going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.